we have this um interesting interview where Ari Shafir essentially ex um expands on some of his impressions <laughs> regarding the LA comedy scene and gives some of his thoughts regarding some of the recent allegations against some of the people within their local community and um it marries up a lot with what i've kind of spoke about in terms of some of the allegations against chris Delir and how some of his friends dealt with it you know as per um the stuff against brian callan and um again you know no one is condoning their crimes you know if they are if what they're accused of if they did what they're accused of i think everybody would be understandable of their friends kind of backing away and distancing themselves from them but i think it's the nature in which some of their friends allegedly or you know supposed friends um, distance themselves from Chris and Brian it makes you think you know what these LA comedians or that kind of clique of people at the comedy store they're not really friends they try and pretend like they are on podcasts and give people the impression that they're independent free spirits who kind of do what they want and aren't controlled by Hollywood but in the end when it came the opportunity or they came when it came the when when the moment arose for each of them to essentially you know earn their coin as friends they decided to you know not do so and you know essentially through their friend of more or their kind of industry acquaintance of more than 10 plus years under the bus in the hopes of maintaining their own relevancy in their position within hollywood and i guess this hasn't been i guess it's been recognized by people on the east coast who you know have essentially been right ragging on these LA guys for a while now and um Irish Shafir kind of touches on that here during this interview with Jim Norton and Sam Roberts I'm going to play for you now I think it's at two minutes two hours ten so am I over here bear with me as I get the clip where is it boom bang boom ten I think it's around here isn't it? right there yeah 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 okay let's play it now I, I appreciate you cut that, gra- that out. I was talking to you. I forgot <laughs> I was being recorded, actually. Yeah. <laughs> but um, do you do you like that when you do stuff like that? It becomes this thing, like I like because comedian podcasts now. All the comedians, it's gone from just comics talking to other comics to comics talking about like what's going on in comedy. So like the the Ari doses Dude. Bert story became the thing that all the comedy podcasts had to take a stance on. Dude, okay, that's a fun one, right? That's obviously a fun one. What mm-hmm. is happening to our world where we got to weigh in on our fucking friends without even fucking talking to them first? Where we got to mm-hmm. say, oh, hey, you're going through some life fucking changing thing where you're being accused of this or this or this. Let me throw my two cents in and throw my fucking friend under the bus. The whole L.A. comedy scene is a fucking suck fest. A fucking bunch <laughs> of disloyal suckers. <laughs> Fuck those people. I'm glad the whole thing is breaking up. Everybody leave. LA deserves none of it. Yeah, it is. And he's obviously, he's obviously been a bit hyperbolic, but um, there is some truth to it, right? Because I think that was the issue, especially with the Brian Kellen and Brendan crying one, right? Especially when they were sobbing and crying about it and they were like, oh, we haven't even spoken to him. We don't know where he is. We haven't toured with him. We don't know his last name. We've never hung out with him for more than an hour on the show. Outside of it, we don't hang out. We don't tour. It was like, what? Like, fair enough, the accusations when they first dropped were quite serious, right? Well, we got we got the impression that this guy was a nonce. We were like, no way, Chris is not a nonce. Fair enough, right? They dropped first. But we, we're allowed to have knee-jerk reactions. You and I, right? The viewing public. We're allowed to kind of frame under the bus, write him off, say it's over, call him a nonce, right? You know, whatever. We're allowed to do that because we don't know the guy, right? This is all just entertainment. This is wrestling to us. But if you're his actual friend, you owe the guy a phone call, a text message, a voice note something right like hey are you okay is this stuff true do you need some help should i come over like don't do anything stupid i don't know something right instead of they just they kind of internalized it all sat on their phones for a bit and decided to put on the cameras and start sobbing brian callen just post post eyelid surgery and brendan Shaw, i don't know in the midst of trying to come to terms with the fact that maybe he's next or something one odd reaction I just still look back on it now and it's still kind of it still it still makes me shake my head like that was one of the weirdest reactions i've seen in my life like it probably you'd probably be better doing the joe rogan on muerta thing right and just not saying a word than sitting on camera and crying about it the day that the news drops especially considering the severity of the allegations it is kind of falling apart man it seems like uh everyone is i mean it's a lot of people who are in a certain tax bracket too but i mean, joe is leaving uh, yeah. Theo, I think, is moving to um, 
Nashville. Nashville. They yeah. said Brendan. I don't know if Brian's moving, but Brendan, I think, is moving to Texas uh, as well. Like, a lot of people are fucking taking off. Diaz? Diaz is moving. He's going Fuck, to yeah. New Jersey. He's, he's yeah. going to be here like this week, I think. Are you happy about yeah. that? Do you get to see him? Yeah, that'll be nice. He's not that. He lives right near, uh, right near Florentine, I think. Yeah. Um, oh, that's great. Yeah. So it's like, it'll be cool having him come in and stuff. And he's a Jersey guy. But I don't know, man. LA's lost its heart a long time ago. Um, it is it is funny though that like comedy LA comedy podcasting became such a thing that everybody is now pinned into this corner that if corporate. you want to keep your yeah if you want to keep your views up you have to comment on what's going on and you can't really take the side of your friends because they're the villains. Fuck right? that! Exactly. Yes, you can. That's Hollywood, dude. You never right. lived there. There's such fucking terrible people who are so worried about their image or what people think of them. They're not willing to be like, fuck you. That's my friend. They, they don't even understand that's a possibility. The whole city fucking option. sucks. Yeah. <laughs> you don't miss it at all. It's in the stores. Um, <laughs> it's funny because he's saying this, especially in the presence of somebody like a Jim Norton, who's, you know, quite admittedly a, a bit of an L.A. guy, right? Um, so to say that and keep bragging on about L.A. being such a shitty place, knowing that Jim has got a lot of friends within the L.A. comedy scene, makes Ari should be an absolute legend. No, you can't really. But like, uh, yeah, can you <laughs> yeah. imagine if like you were being accused of something and Patrice would be like, oh, I got to I got to say my two cents here. I, I, I have to say that without knowing without knowing the facts, without having talked to the other person involved. Yeah, that's absolutely. crazy. That's crazy. Absolutely. Even if it was like, no, no, it's true. Let's say you were being accused of, uh, I don't know what, having sex with women, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, <laughs> something embarrassing and, and completely off, <laughs> off for you. Even if it were true, he'd be like, I ah, listen, that's my buddy. Even if he talked to you and like, yeah, it's hundred percent still, that's my buddy. I don't know what you want me to tell you. Yeah. 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 You would, again, you would have liked to have that, that to have been the response. You would have assumed that would have been the response with some of them. But again, you know, I guess sometimes when you get involved in Hollywood and you get, um, you know, you get invited into certain rooms, um, you get hang around, you hang around with certain individuals, uh, you get sold a dream by your agents that you could be the next this, this and that. Um, it's hard to then to suddenly kind of, uh, it's hard to kind of put all that stuff in jeopardy for the sake of somebody that you don't really know that well. I definitely understand the logic of, you know, throwing your friends under the bus, but I just couldn't do it if that was me personally. I understand for them doing it. You know, I get it. They want to, you know, self-preservation, all that malarkey. There's not many opportunities in Hollywood. They would imagine. So I, I guess it's, there is a lot of opportunities, but I guess if you're in that kind of crab in a barrel, poverty, sort of like scarcity mindset, you would, you would think, hey, I've just about got in the door myself. I'm not going to let this chance go um especially off the back of this you know such serious allegations so i get it but it would have just been nice to have seen a little bit more of collective unity and more of a kind of on where to silence amongst the friends so they could kind of all help each other out because eventually look what happened you know eventually cancel culture mob essentially came off the cannon they were going to you know they nearly took they tried to take out joey diaz but the church fought back which was great to see they were coming after literally everybody and they were looking for all the skeletons and everybody's colors to take them out. So it's not as if, you know, staying quiet and not saying anything or throwing your friend on the bus did anything for anyone's popularity or did anything for anyone's image. If anything, it probably caused more division, right? You got Amy Schumer out there purposely, you know, putting her flag in the in the ground and saying, you know, I'm with Hollywood, fuck you comedians. You've got um Whitney Cummings essentially deciding to, you know, um throw Chris under the bus, who she worked with a lot recently and, you know, essentially kind of iced him out in that regard. You don't know what she's doing privately, but for the most part it looks like she has. So it has kind of affected them badly right you got brendan schulb on his side who's now having to do a show with josh wolf who i like but you know the reaction from that show hasn't been good it's probably been it's been very very poorly received by most of the fans especially especially the fans that are actually riding with them they've not really liked it and then you've got brian cannon somewhere doing a podcast with you know sam triple on a wobbly table um it's just you know it's it's kind of ended really badly for everybody by all intents purposes so maybe the right decision would have been to stick with your friends because in the end no one really won except the house in it no one really won except 